In our very first video, we will discuss the monopoly's counterintuitive marginal revenue curve. To understand the monopoly conditions that produce the monopoly's marginal revenue curve, we first must briefly consider economic profits and monopoly's opposite, perfect competition. Our usual conception of profit is simply total revenue minus all fixed and variable costs. Let's call this accounting profit. To economists, however, the cost of foregone possibilities is also important. We call those costs opportunity costs. They are the cost of the next best alternative. So, if little Jimmy cuts out from work early to buy some ice cream, the opportunity cost of that ice cream was the lost wages from the lemonade stand. The economic cost of the ice cream was the dollar cost of the ice cream plus the wages Jimmy would have earned if he had stayed. An opportunity cost for a business could be the rent that it would get from an office building that it owns and uses instead of renting out. So, economic profit is calculated by subtracting fixed and variable costs as well as the opportunity cost from the total revenue. This is a fundamental concept in economics that is really beyond the scope of this video to explore properly, but this brief sketch will suffice for our purposes. We must also take a cursory glance at a firm in a perfectly competitive market. A perfectly competitive market is defined by four features. A large number of small firms, identical products, freedom of entry into and exit from the market, and perfect information between the firms. No real world market meets these rigid conditions, but this extreme is still useful to understand the conditions that create other markets. Because there are so many small firms in this model, competition among them drives the price down to the level of zero economic profit which is where the price equals the cost of producing one more unit of product, called the marginal cost. If it sets its price above the market price, the firm will have no customers, because they will buy from a firm with a lower price. If it sets its price below the market price, the firm will be losing money because it will cost more to make a unit than it gets from selling that unit. So, in the case of a firm in perfect competition, it is a price taker, because it has to take the price that the market determines. Thus, the demand facing an individual firm is completely horizontal, or perfectly elastic, meaning that any change in price will shift all of the quantity demanded. Now that we have the demand curve for an individual firm, we can find its revenue. To calculate the total revenue for the firm, one must simply multiply the total quantity sold by the price. Determining the revenue from one additional unit sold, called the marginal revenue, involves multiplying the change in quantity with the price and adding the change in price multiplied by the original quantity to account for the new price's effect on the original customers. However, in the case of a perfectly competitive market, an increase in the quantity sold by a firm does not affect the price, and thus the second term is zero. So, the marginal revenue will be exactly the same as the price. Unlike the firm facing perfect competition, the monopolistic firm is not a price taker, but a price setter. Because the monopoly is the only firm in the market, when it changes its price, the total quantity sold is affected, and vice versa. The total quantity sold will affect the price. For example, if a firm lowers its price, it will gain customers. But because it can't maintain the original price with the original customers, instead now offering the new lower price, it will lose money on the original customers. So, with a price decrease, unlike a perfect competition, there are two effects on marginal revenue. First, the addition of money from customers who are attracted by the lower price, and second, the loss from the lower price on the original customers who are willing to pay the higher original price. So, the marginal revenue of a monopoly will always be less than the price because of the loss from the lower price on the original customers due to its monopoly power. Another way to see it is that the downward sloping demand curve is also the average revenue curve. So, for it to be downward sloping, the marginal revenue curve must lie below it in order to pull the average down and create the downward slope. This is important because it explains why monopolies create an inefficient allocation of resources in the economy. In order to maximize profits, the monopoly will set the price where the marginal cost is equal to the marginal revenue, just like any other firm. However, because the marginal revenue is less than the price, the price will be higher than it would be if the firm behaved like a perfectly competitive firm, and the quantity sold will be lower. As the price rises from the competitive price to the monopoly price, we can see that three important regions are created. The green section represents the transfer of surplus from the consumer to the monopolist. No output is lost in this transfer. However, in transitioning to the monopoly price, the two sections in red are also created. They represent the loss of output called deadweight loss. Since the social value of the unit of output is represented by the price, and the cost to society of producing that output is the marginal cost, 
The difference between the two represents the social surplus of that unit. Moving from the competitive price to the monopoly price loses the potential social surplus that is contained in the red sections, where the price, the social value of that unit, is higher than the marginal cost, the social cost of that unit. So to achieve efficiency in the market, the monopoly should expand output to the competitive level. However, since this would eliminate the firm's economic profits, an unrestrained monopoly will not do this, and thus maintains the market's deadweight loss. We can now see both how the monopoly's marginal revenue curve is created, and how the monopoly power that it represents leads to the inefficient behavior of an unregulated monopoly.